My name is Scott with CrossBikeReview.com. We're in sunny Las Vegas at Interbike and at 2015 Cross Vegas. Here with me is Jeremy Powers. Jeremy, thanks for coming over Thank and you. talking with Thank us. Thank you very Appreciate much. It. Yes, my I pleasure to be here. I got a few things I want to ask and talk to you about. Definitely. Your jam fund. Yes. What's up with that? Tell us what that is. Yeah, the jam fund. Uh, it's actually, yeah, it's basically jam is an acronym for Jeremy, Alec, and Makunda is my other two friends that I started it with. Um, essentially is an organization that uh, basically kicks down the financial barriers to allow kids to get into cyclocross um, that maybe wouldn't be able to get to the top otherwise. Um, we provide coaching, insight, life skills. Uh, it's pretty much a feel-good project. We have a, uh, it's, it's a, a proper nonprofit. We have a ride in every July. It's called the Grand Fundo. Nice. And uh, Good. yeah, we have about 500 people come out. That's what ultimately supports the program. Um, we do have some other great partners like the North End Cycling Club, Focus Bikes, a lot of my sponsors that are part of my Aspire team also help um, with the Jam Fund and, and let those uh, let the riders that are on there flourish underneath our, our guard. That's 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 great. You know why? Because it builds a community. It's, it, it, it is, and it should be like that. Cyclocross is its own community. Yes. And you're, you're speaking my language because I was uh, the head skills coach for the American Cycling Association for nine years. And I sat on the board and we started the first bike program for kids so we could get kids on bikes, the local sale, and we've got this whole fleet of bicycles going in and we grew our numbers of juniors from 40 to like 400 in like five years. Awesome. It is. It is great. So we need to get more kids on bikes. I'm glad you're with me on that and have them fun and give them the direction they need so they can have fun and race. And For sure, and each, yeah, each region needs its own support program, you know, and so we don't work with anyone that's outside of really a couple hours of radius from us because we don't feel like we can help them as much as we, you know, maybe you can in Colorado or maybe Jim Brown can in, in the Northwest or maybe the crew that's in, you know, Red Zone down in Louisville, Kentucky, something like that. So we try to really focus on our little our little nest and, um, and work with everyone that we can that's in need. So. Right. So right now it's fairly localized, and you're gonna and you're gonna get it down to where it can be reputable, and you can go plant yeah. those, those. I mean, I think that the dream is that we have rides around that are able to support their own chapters down the road. If it, if it ever led to that, I think that would be very cool. But right now we're really happy, and you know, I think proud to be able to have what we have. So you we're happy. Be, you should be proud because you know what? You're, you're being a leader. You're Thanks, setting man. the standard. You're leading by example, Thanks. and you're doing good things. And you and and. People should look up to you and follow your example. We're trying. We're trying to set good examples, and I think that you know, through every every result, it's not always about the results. It's always you know, through every race, through every training session, through everything. It's always about having a good having a good attitude, but also having fun. And you know, you hear that a lot, but the truth is that if you come to one of our training sessions, if you come out to one of our events, I guarantee we'll be having a good time, and everyone will feel like they're getting something out of it and improving themselves. And that's what it's about. It's about life. It's not necessarily just about winning bike races. It's about being a good player in the community, creating you know good environment and, and right. having fun. Right. Every, you know, you, t you touched on something there. Uh, sportsmanship. Sure. It's about respect. Yeah. Respect. Respect for sport, your competitors, sure. the rules. Absolutely. Everything. Like all that. Stuff. So anyway, we are in Las Vegas. Yeah, it man. is Cross Vegas time. You are racing tomorrow. Yeah, we're racing tomorrow. And you know. So are the women, and you have somebody in the women's race. What's her name? Ellen Noble is going to be here racing with the Jam Fund. Um, last year, Stephen Hyde, who now races for Cannondale Southern Cross World, is um, he's stepped along from the, from the Jam Fund. We've had a lot of riders come through um, and, and, and then go and flap their wings. Good. Um, and so Ellen is probably the next one that will go on to flap her wings. Um, but she's here staying with my program, Aspire Racing, using our mechanics and our staff. Um, and Al and Makunda are also here helping her with the Jam Fund. And so she'll be fully set up tomorrow to, uh, to do the best ride that she can. You know, at 19, it's going to be a great experience for her as well as um, an incredible opportunity to try to showcase herself and Jam and all its partners. Right, that's, that's great. That's great. Yeah. And we'll have to hear about it. And, and um, so let's get back to the men and the men. You, and, you know, I've talked to a few riders and you're mentioned in the top five. So how are you feeling? I feel great. I mean, it's a great opportunity for me to showcase here in the United States at the World Cup level. Um, pretty much the only time it's ever happened, you know, outside the World Championships and then obviously Vegas and so on. Yeah, it's been a good race for me every year. And so I think for me this year, it's uh, obviously increased competition um, with all the top riders in the world at this event. But it is definitely one that suits my skill set and my strengths. And so I just hope for a good day and, and um, you know. Who are you going to be watching? Uh, 
Sven is obviously one of the guys, Vanderhaar. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so Sven Nies, Lars Vanderhaar, Wout Van Eric are probably the three guys that I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep like light notes on. I don't really, I, I mostly pay attention to see who's doing what and, and how much energy they're expending. And then, um, you know, I just, you never know until you get into the race who's going to have what. And so for me, I, I really, I just try to literally zone out and, and keep like light notes on everyone and what they're doing and, and, and play my cards when I get the opportunity. And what, what part of the race you're in? If you're in the beginning of the race, in the middle of the race? It's always different. I mean, this race has been won in a lot of different ways over the years. And so with a bigger field, you know, I was like, I don't know. They're saying 25 mile an hour winds are possible. And so that could change things. Um, the course is different than it used to be. It's got a lot more punchiness um, and steep climbs in it, which, yeah, is good for me. It's not a bad thing at all, but it's going to change a little bit of how the race yo-yos. Um, and that could pop some guys off before I think it had in the past. So there are some things, there's some slower, you know, you get down slower speeds and then higher accelerations. So there'll be a couple more getting on top of it, you know, like really quickly getting yeah, back so up to speed. Yeah, some more matches are involved, so bring a big group of matches. Yeah. So we'll see. I don't know. It's a, it's a race and we'll see how it plays out. And I'm looking forward to it very much. It's a huge opportunity. It's been on the, it's been up and on the bulletin board for a long time. So I really love it. Jeremy, it's always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you very much. This is Scott with CrossbikeReview.com from Las Vegas. Come by and read those reviews. See you later.